In this world, there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. For Romeo Olguin, this is the beginning of a trial of sanity. A dark entity attacks her in her own home. With the help of paranormal investigators, she discovers a gateway inside her house and another one inside her mind. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. Nearly a century before Tucson, Arizona became part of the United States, Spanish missionaries came looking for souls to convert. Today, their influences are still felt here. Proof that the past is never completely dead and buried. Romy Holguin and her husband, Fernando, are at a crossroads in their lives. Romy is between jobs, and Fernando has recently retired from the military. They have four children and are staying at Romy's mother's house while they search for a new home. One day, they decide to explore a new neighborhood. Romy senses that she is being pulled towards something. I noticed this house that had like overgrown weeds that was very run down. I said, I want to look at that house. see why anybody else would want a house the way it was when we first, you know, saw it. Honey, look beyond what you see now. But I want this house. What's so special about this house? For whatever reason, I was just drawn to it. The couple talks to neighbors, hoping to find out who owns the house. They learn that it is abandoned. No one ever stays there very long. That night, Romy begins making calls to locate the owner. For some reason, she is obsessed with the prospect of buying the abandoned house. Most people, they don't go look for the most rundown house that they can find and say, I'm going to fix this up because that takes a lot of time and a lot of money. I had young children and I wanted to move out of my mother's house as soon as possible. haunted Romy since childhood. I was really scared that I kept having it and that I didn't understand why I kept having it. I thought it was kind of trying to give me a message and if I didn't understand that I was going to keep having it.
Romy eventually tracks down the owner of the house and makes a deal. Honey, we can get the house. I've gone over my bills. You really want this? Yes. My brother's ready to start the construction. Her brother, who was a carpenter. So he said, yeah, it's a doable thing. So that's what made us, you know, decide to go ahead and get it. Okay. okay. After months of renovations, the Holguin family moves into their new home. Romy and Fernando's children are glad to finally have their own space. Hey guys, check your box. Make sure everything's inside. Everything's here. Did you open the inside? Everything's in there? Yeah, everything's in here. After nightfall, several members of the family are awakened by faint noises. Veronica and Angelica think they hear their brothers talking at the other end of the hall. I look behind me and she's standing behind me and I'm thinking, oh no. What's in the bathroom? We just ran back to our room and just thought there's something weird about this place. Two nights later. I could sense that someone was there. They were sleeping. They were sound asleep. I didn't want to tell anyone. Because I didn't want them to think I was crazy. I'm just so tired. Take some coffee. So I kind of kept it to myself. I don't really like it. I always kept thinking maybe there is an explanation for it. Is that good? A few nights later.
was paralyzed. Romy begins to doubt her own sanity. She assumes that the things she sees are all in her mind. One day, Romy and her sister bring food to an elderly shut-in. There's a black spirit in your house. The moment that he shook my hand, he said, there's a spirit that lives in your house. Please, sit down. Please. I don't even know him. I never had seen him or anything. The man says that he is a clairvoyant. He tells Romy not to be scared and suggests that she follow the dark spirit to find out what it wants. Have you followed him? I said, no. I don't care what he wants. I don't want to go there. Be careful. There's a gateway at your house. All the bad spirits might come through it. So please be careful. Romy hopes that if she ignores the spirit, it won't come back. attacks Romy Holguin in her own bedroom. Fernando, wake up! Fernando, wake up! I was just so scared. I felt as if those dead people were trying to contact me. I had an uncle that would always say, you should never fear the dead. It's the live ones that will you know, hurt you. But I, I beg to differ. Fernando tries to be supportive, but he is unsure what to believe. It was kind of hard because there was really nothing I could do other than just listen to her and try to comfort her. I said, that's it. We've got to stay in the living room, so we stayed in there for a long time. Where it was a ritual for the kids. I just felt better if we were all together. I just felt that I could protect them. One night we were settling in in the living room, and my son says to me, Mom, yeah. I know why you want us to sleep in the living room. What are you talking about, baby? Because of the man in black. When he said that to me, I literally started crying and felt really ill. Come on, baby. If I saw it, it was okay, but I just, I didn't want anything to happen to them. So far, the children don't seem frightened. Man in black, I can't take a chance. You're scared. But Romy cannot ignore the likelihood that her house is haunted. I told my wife that if she was that scared, that we should just, you know, sell the house and move. This is our home. I know, but after this. But she told me that she would never sell the house. Fernando, we are not moving out of this house. We have to move out of this house. Romy believes that she alone is the target of whatever haunts the place. You're scared yourself. The family cannot afford to move. So she decides to silently endure her restless nights 
as long as her children remain safe. Romy is very, very strong, strong-minded, strong-willed. And she never showed like she was really scared, but I think that was so that the children wouldn't be scared themselves. I knew there was something here, but I really didn't think there was anything that could harm us. Soon after, Romy feels something tugging on her as she sleeps. She woke up and, you know, told me that she had a really bad dream. I said, I mustn't have been feeling so well last night. No, something's not right. I just felt like, like I kept moving. He said, you did. You ended up almost in the middle of the bed, and you were very, very restless. I was on my way to work, so, you know, I left it at that. teeth marks along the back side of my arm. It scared me so horribly. All I could think of was getting out of there as fast as I could. Romy drives to work unable to comprehend what's happened to her. Joyce, Joyce. For her own sanity, she needs someone to verify that the bite marks are real. Oh, look at it. Oh, my God. You're the person who believes me. Of course I believe you. Look at that. Wow. You see that? Later that night, Romy shows the marks to her husband. Fernando, look at this. That bite mark was really big. Something attacked me in the middle of the night. You could still see him, and that was maybe about eight, nine hours later. Yeah. That was when he first realized that this is something that's really serious, that it really is real. We got, we got to leave this house. Once again, the family sleeps in the living room. They continue to do this for the next six months. Early one morning. I got that feeling that this man in black was warning me that something was wrong. Something's wrong. I have to go. Romy senses that her elderly aunt, who has been hospitalized for several weeks, is in trouble. Honey, I have to go. She immediately leaves to check on her. really early this morning. And when she told me that, it sent chills up and down my back. Within an hour, she actually died. The death of her aunt horrifies Romy. She fears this is a sign from the dark spirit that haunts her house. But is it a warning? or a threat. So what can you tell me exactly about the previous summer? One afternoon, when a neighbor comes to visit, Romy learns the details of the house's sordid past. Well, what, what happened? But this house does not have a good history. His father's gone. A younger 
teen, maybe age 15, had actually shot himself. Oh. The father came home and found him shot and then hung himself. Here? I think it was a couple of years. For the first time, Romy has a possible explanation for the things she's seen. I had a lot of trouble at school. Kids pick on me. I was afraid that history might repeat itself. That's what scared me. Romy experiences nothing unusual for several months. Cold. I could feel like a swirl of ice cold. They're just going around me, around me. I could almost see, hear the wind. Romy. 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 having a really bad dream, but I didn't tell her about what had happened because I didn't want to scare her any more than she was already. Finally, Romy and Fernando decide to ask for help. They ask Kenneth Moreland, the deacon from their local congregation, to bless the house. We have a lovely home here. In the blessing of the home, we're actually asking God to be present in that home and to make that home a sacred space. What we'll do is say some prayers together. The couple explains that the house has a troubling history. They fear that something evil is haunting them. The Catholic Church's position on things like this is that we know that evil exists in the world. We don't, as humans, uh, totally understand the realm of that spiritual life, whatever it is that's out there. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Right after the deacon left, I felt at peace and I felt like finally, this is it. It was just starting to get dark. I started to feel like something was horribly wrong. I don't know if whatever the deacon did just made them stronger at that moment. Who, who knows? It was so frightening. story where Jesus was approaching his cemetery 
and a man came out of the cemetery, and he supposedly had a legion of devils in him, meaning many, many devils. And they begged Jesus to leave and to leave them alone. And I feel that's exactly what was happening in Romy's situation. We had taken goodness into Romy's home and asked for the presence of God to be there. And whatever that presence was that was there didn't like that. Fernando returns home from work late that night and finds that Romy has returned to sleeping in the living room. herself becomes a grandmother. Her frightening encounters have become less frequent. She and Fernando remain in the house. She takes care of her grandson, Alec, while his mother, Veronica, is at work. Alec begins speaking to an imaginary friend in Romy's house. Alec, who's Michael? He calls his friend Michael and claims that Michael sometimes tells him what to do. I kept thinking that maybe he was just making it up. Michael wanted me to go upstairs. As the months went on, he interacted with it so much that I had to come to the conclusion that he was actually interacting with an entity. Veronica, I'm concerned about you. What about? Romy tells her daughter that she believes something might be exerting an unnatural influence on Alec. Mom, don't worry about it. All kids have imaginary friends. Veronica, I really didn't think about him being harmed. And I just kind of thought of what in the world are people going to think of our family? First my mom sees things, and then here my son's starting to see him also. takes her son home and learns that he is frightened of his new friend. He didn't want the door closed. He didn't want to be in any room alone. scared of what normal kids are scared of. If something in his closet, something under his bed, or if there was actually something in there that could harm him. There's no one. Because he's my kid, I'd like to just put him in a little glass box and make sure nothing bad ever happens to him. But it's not something that I can control. again visits his grandparents. We're doing that remodeling, and we were upstairs. I was with my uh, grandson. And 
we were coming back down the stairs. All of a sudden, it just went tumbling. Okay. And then he just turned back and looked at me and said, Tata, why did you push me? And I said, no, I didn't push you. It's okay. He said, well, we were coming down the stairs. You feel okay? And all of a sudden, Alex's shoulder went forward, like he had been literally pushed from his back. Alec escapes with only minor bruises. But it's clear to Romy, the dark spirit is back. Yes, hi, is this Amy Allen? After her grandson is pushed down the stairs by an unseen force, Romy takes action. I couldn't handle myself being attacked, but now my grandkids were involved. Romy contacts a professional paranormal investigator who she heard on a local radio program. Investigator Amy Allen visits Romy's house. Her case uh, was very intriguing. It was kind of a state of emergency uh, because people were getting hurt. The first thing Amy notices are nearby radio and TV towers, which emit high levels of electromagnetic energy. Parapsychologists have suggested that this can cause hallucinations. Amy conducts her investigations with the help of paranormal sensitives. Hey, Amy. How are you doing? I'm good. Sensitives experience the spirit world in various ways. I'm tell you a whole lot. Um, really Some experience it visually. I want to see what kind of feeling. Okay. Yeah. Others through emotion. A technician brings equipment to measure energy in the house. All right, Teresa, this is the living room. Let's see how you feel about this room and then maybe head upstairs. I wanted one of three things to happen for them to prove and hope that I was crazy or that they would get rid of whatever was there and thirdly that it wouldn't harm my grandson Amy asks Romy and Fernando not to speak with the sensitives about the case they must approach their investigation without any preconceptions. We're very scientific and we want yeah. only the facts and we have to control this as much as possible. Yeah. Your readings are abnormal. The team takes baseline energy readings using an electromagnetic frequency meter. This will provide a point of comparison for detecting energy fluctuations during the investigation. Teresa has the ability to sense the presence of spirits and their emotions. detects an unnatural presence. She couldn't really make any kind of direct contact with him or get a story off of him. Teresa leaves. A second sensitive, Rosalinda, arrives to investigate using a different type of extrasensory perception. Rosalinda's a psychic knower which means that she uh, sees pictures in her mind's eye. Something really, really bad. Thank you. 
she'll actually see like movies playing in, in her mind. What she was seeing was Romy. Because the environment there is so high with the electromagnetic field, it's actually absorbing living energy and then playing it back. So even though Romy and her husband are still alive, they're already being absorbed into their walls of their home and being played back. Rosalinda senses the presence of a dark entity. She tried to leave the room and saw in her mind it saying, go ahead and try to get rid of me. Go ahead, I dare you. Paranormal investigators are convinced that a dangerous entity has invaded Romy's home. The investigators plan to spend the night there to gather more information. While the investigators set up in another part of the house, Romy suffers through a particularly restless night. All of a sudden, I started to get really anxious. I felt like the room was full of people. You have to get out of here. There are too many people here with us. In the house? No, in this room. I got up like really desperate. My husband said, what are you doing? I said, I have to leave. I feel like there's a bunch of people in here with me. I just have to get out of here. Honey, honey, honey. Please. The next morning, the sensitives share their experiences with Romy, Fernando, and paranormal investigator Amy Allen. I think Romy has some sort of psychic ability. What we are looking for is a correlation between the different types of sensitives. Yesterday when I was touring the house, I felt a very dark presence in the bedroom, but it was a very strong presence. I had the same experience too, except- Teresa and Rosalinda both describe encounters with a dark figure. Some very dark images. Romy confesses that she has been seeing the same thing for years. We did this. Um, when Amy hears this, she theorizes that Romy herself is sensitive to the spirit world. She said to me, I don't know how you live here. She explained that there was portals in the house, two of them to be exact, that were like a doorway to the other side. Spirits that you're hearing are coming and entering through those portals. That is something that you will find with people who are sensitive, that they may have some kind of vortex or a doorway for the dead. Basically what happens is they're attracted to the sensitive that resides in that location and this doorway is formed so they can try to make contact with the sensitive that's living there. So I think the spirits that you're hearing coming and going and the voices are actually now, the spirits. I felt like it was all turned around. Not only did I have problems with my grandbaby dealing with this and myself dealing with this and the house being haunted, now I had one extra thing to deal with. We just need to really go over our data some more. With your own personal strength, can we get rid of all these spirits and ghosts in here, okay? So Rosalinda show shows stage. Romy how to perform a ritual cleansing of the house. And put it in this dish. You're going to burn it and just wait. She burns it sage and, and sprinkles holy water around windows here. and doorways. So Romy could also take on a sense of uh, being proactive in the situation and taking care of what was going on and gaining some control herself. Amy Allen hopes that this will help purify the environment by getting rid of negative energy. But she knows they'll have to do more research to put an end to the haunting. We don't say we have a definite conclusion. We can't do that until we've gone over all of the data. People think that when they have investigators come to the home, 
This person's gonna solve all of my problems right here, right now, today. And unfortunately, that's not how this works. Amy Allen goes home to study her data. She must consider many possibilities before taking action. Is the dark figure the spirit of a deceased human? Or something else? A few weeks after the initial visit, Amy Allen returns to Romy's house to perform her own meditative cleansing. She sets up in Romy's bedroom where the most violent events have taken place. I wanted to see, you know, can I do anything spiritually about this situation? I'm a physical medium, which means that I make contact in a physical sense. When I made contact with this thing, it had no response, no reaction. Amy begins to wonder if the entity is something other than a ghost. I did not feel I had made a connection with an actual deceased individual. It was nothing but energy. causes you fear, I want you to repeat the blessings with the holy water and tell the spirit to leave, okay? I'm serious. Even if you have to yell at it and say, I don't want you here anymore, be serious, okay? That should help you out. All right, you'll be fine. and I felt like really like I was gonna be sick. I'd never felt so horrible. I said, that's it. I went back in there finally and I said, I am not gonna let you intimidate me. I'm not gonna let you scare me in my house anymore. I need you to Nothing go. Like well. that love I need you to leave. Romy calls Amy Allen for help. Investigation. A dark entity appears in the home of paranormal investigator Amy Allen. Get out of my house. She recognizes the entity as Romy's tormentor. Hello, Amy, it's Romy. It's back. The man in black. No, Romy, you sent it to me. Amy, what are you saying? What are you talking about? Uh -huh. She said you sent that man in black to my house. Amy suddenly realizes something quite extraordinary. The dark entity is not a ghost at all. It's a poltergeist. 
something Romy has unknowingly manifested herself. It was like a huge puzzle, and I had all these facts, and I'm like, it's Romy. The haunting was coming from Romy herself, and she was projecting it out into our physical reality. Amy concludes that Romy possesses psychokinetic or PK abilities. She's created a physical embodiment of her own anxieties. Anger, depression, anxiety, guilt, remorse. What that means is it's, it's not a ghost living in the outside world. It's the most extreme type of poltergeist haunting. Romy, because she's in charge of the family, couldn't allow herself to really experience these emotions. This entity is inside of you. What she ended up doing, without her even consciously being aware of this, was to project her emotions out. This consciousness took on its own dynamic force. It's almost like I'm beating my own self up, technically. I was frightening my children that I wanted to protect. I was protecting them from me, and at the same time, I was scaring them. I was the one that was tormenting them, and myself also. I call it my curse. Today, Romy and her family live in relative calm. But they still occasionally struggle with both the spirits that haunt their home and the poltergeist that torments Romy. I would like to control this in a way where I could do good and not evil. But it seems kind of hard for me to do that if, in fact, I have the ability to torture even my own self. If she doesn't deal with her abilities and get a handle on, on her energy and all of these things, it could come back as it was before, or even worse. It really is a curse to me. One thing I found in common with all PK manifestations is that the person needs to have counseling, some type of therapy where they can vent their emotions in a safe, positive space with someone who's not going to judge them or be upset with them, where they can literally unleash all of these emotions that they've kept repressed. So therapy is consistently a recommendation in these cases.